for mass extinction. There you go, that's it, end it there. As humans destroy our own habitat. That is the no holes barred message from climate change expert Guy McPherson from the University of Arizona. Some label him an eco-terrorist. Others say he's an anarchist. But could he just be a realist? Guy's in New Zealand on a speaking tour and joins me now. Guy, great to see you again. Likewise, Paul. Last time I spoke to you, um, 2014, and you sort of, you know, snatched any hope of a future from me and my family, um, it was it was doom and gloom. Has anything changed since then in your in your account of things? Oh, yes. The situation is far worse than it was then. Okay, okay, okay. Um, well, I, I'd appreciate the opportunity for people to know what's going on in the world. That's why I do what I do. If you're so. right... The reason we talk about it is in an attempt essentially to fool ourselves into thinking that we can actually stave it off. Well, it depends on your perspective. Again, uh, my perspective is that there is nothing to be done in terms of preserving the human species more than a few more years. Um, but I, th I think in terms of the human race, we're done. It's locked in. It's been locked in for a long time. We're in the midst of the sixth mass extinction. Okay, we'll talk about your time frame in a moment because I guess that, it, and that, uh, you've already indicated that's something that does change because things have got worse rapidly, more rapidly than perhaps you originally thought. It's just This has come like a bolt out of the blue from me. I should have known this. It should have been on the card 10 years. Um, what, no, 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 what do you make of we don't all the other years. experts? Because you're an expert. What do you make of all the other experts that do seem to think we can affect change, we can survive? They are experts as well, or claim to be. Right, right. And, and well, for one thing, they're paid. And, and so they only go halfway in presenting the information. Almost nobody is willing to add up the feedbacks that we have triggered and, yeah. and the consequences of them. So because we're a society that is focused on specialization, the specialists are geared towards understanding one aspect or, or, or another aspect of mm. climate change. Mm. Things like global dimming or the melting of the Arctic ice and the albedo associated with that or the methane. Nobody's putting all those so things So in a together. nutshell, they, they, they're lying, essentially. They're fooling themselves and everybody else. Uh, I, I would hate to use the word lying. I think it's far worse than that. <laughs> Guy, thank you very much for joining us. Hi, I'm Jimmy McNichol. Planet View Television was shot 27 years ago, far ahead of its time, yet so relevant today. Here's a clip. Watching Planet View. Planet View is an ecological variety news series. PV features in-depth interviews with world-renowned guests from the fields of entertainment, government, science, and industry. An entertaining weekly celebration of the Earth's beauty, the positive news conveying strong family values, our ecological challenges and solutions at work. Secretary of State Dan Glickman of the Department of Agriculture. And then on Animal Kingdom, our human connection with the Grand Pacific Humpbacks. What is that connection? Why are we humans so intrigued with these massive mammals? Planet View unlocks the mystery next week on Animal Kingdom. And now we go to Washington to my brother James, who's covering the national marketplace for the environment. The closed door session is about to begin, and I hear it's an ecological wonderland where corporate America meets the United States government to design our ecological future. That's right, Chris. There's a lot going on here. Representatives from the EPA, the GSA, the Defense Department, and corporate America, all taking a hard look at ecological products and services. That's great, Jimmy. Industry and our government are teaming up at this very moment. We go now with our Planet View cameras to the national marketplace with James and this week's corporate green giant, Ford. Rather than building great chemical factories to process petroleum, we've got lots of microorganisms that have evolved over the last four billion years to process a lot of these chemicals on their own so we can actually use them as our chemical plants. So what we're doing is building an economy based on biology as opposed to geology. And we had this economy 150 years ago when we had plants as the base of our, most of our raw materials. Henry Ford in the 1930s built an automobile 
the body of which was made from plastic made from soybeans. Henry Ford had a suit made out of soybeans. Ford Motor Company is shooting for the introduction of a green car. So we are back to the future, to, the, to this biologically based economy. And that's the Planet View from here. From Washington, I'm James McNichol. And I'm Christy McNichol. Hope you enjoyed the show. We'll see you next week on Planet View. Hi, I'm Christy McNichol, and now you're watching Planet View 2.0. Jacob, Hatch, Jimmy McNichol, nice to meet you here in Pleasure, this, this Jimmy. beautiful uh, rainbow mecca center of what could be the next sanctuary for the state of California, let alone the research side. For starters, we know what's here. It's the most fertile dirt, and I mean, that's why, you know, Fallbrook and the avocado capital of the world lives, because this is, a, this is what it's all about. And so when we look at the soil here and we smell it, I naturally actually want to take a bite of it. You take a good whiff, that's your body oh, telling you that's rich and good. You literally want to crunch it. But what we do in America and California, still the method is to, you know, shave it off to a clean thing, run the water off, run it to the beach. So right now it's still moist under here after we've had it dry because we've had rain and we have shade and we have wind blockage. So with this type of planning, which is the very basis of sustainability, we can do things like create cold spots, hot spots, even grow tropicals by creating wind breaks so they don't get frost bitten. And it all starts with the soil. The soil literally cures everything we are producing food for the world and we need to be better stewards of our soil as the governor and people are now really incentivized with that work to continue that process because it's only the, the lifeblood of who we are as a planet. We are, we are an agricultural state, we're a production state. In order for us to maintain that with our beautiful property, we need to stop taking away our topsoil, start feeding our soil. I've seen this enough with my own eyes, I've done this enough with my own eyes that I could tell you as a scientist from the bottom of my heart, this works. Planet View 2.0 is a media partner with IntelliReef. My name is Guy Brenna. I'm a co-founder and I am the design lead for IntelliReefs. We look directly at the sea floor and build from um, nature's economy of scale. We're using a material called oceanite. It's a material that we developed that's very specific for site and species that's using local materials and local labor to produce marine habitat in a way that's not going to be the kind of destructive habitat that you're seeing being put in all over the world. Every single bit of oceanite, no matter where we put it, is, is regionally specific. It's, it's using the rocks and the sands that those regional species are used to, to be the core makeup of oceanite. Since current CO2 levels are already too high, and we have no way to effectively reduce them in time, our only option is to decouple the temperature problem from the CO2 problem. When some of the sun's energy is reflected back into space by surfaces on Earth, it has an overall cooling effect on the planet. This phenomenon is called the albedo effect. Solar radiation management is the concept of raising the albedo of the Earth to thereby absorb less of the sun's energy, stabilizing and then reducing temperatures to allow the time needed for humanity to transition to a sustainable carbon neutral energy model while nature-based solutions slowly reduce greenhouse gas concentrations in the atmosphere.